So yeah, you're kind of right. Welcome yeah. everybody to this week's uh, Monday meeting done on a Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Um, yeah. I was, out, I, was, <laughs> I was out of office yesterday, so um, I was out of office at the Offset Earth board meeting, shout out Offset Earth, they are you know, members, um, and it was fun. Uh, it was a long day. But you had to the way to Farnborough. Always right, Farnborough, right? yeah. Um, By far. It's kind of famous for playing so ironic, really, when yeah. you're trying to save the world and plant trees. But um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, but now I've got a four day week, so that's going to be playing catch up. Yeah. I mean, in your de- I mean, yeah, in, in, in Ash's defense, I was also at office yesterday. So you, you were? Um, to Bristol. Till Why were you out of the office? It took me five and a half hours to get back yesterday. The storm. I mean, that wasn't the question. That wasn't no, it wasn't the question. The question, no, the question. The um, the question was, what was that? Because it's it my birthday. Yeah. Yesterday. So exactly. now I'm not doing real birthdays actually. But uh, why not? Because <laughs> you want to pretend that you're that age for as long as possible. That's exactly. I just don't. Right. I'm really, I'm really not a fan of talking about my age. I'm t- I'm like, well, it, just because I. I've, I've crossed the barrier that I in my mind last last Friday, and I feel like I've gone into a new bracket or new stage of my life with my age. Wow. And I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Well, you do realise that all of the I'm all of this information you're giving is like narrowing it down. Yeah. No, but so much like not it. enough. So everybody currently thinks you're definitely thirty. I know, which, which is which is which is actually funny because on the bus back from the station yesterday, it was Tuffy's. I got given a child's ticket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Like Fifteen and under. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, I was wearing a headband. I think maybe these don't. These add to the um, the childlike look. They yeah. do. They do. They take the years off. I'm Who needs headbands. a face lift? You just wear a headband. The more, the more headbands you wear, the <laughs> yeah. sort of multiplier. Yeah, for sure. I, don't know, for sure. Headbands everywhere. I think headbands are the new thing. Like, right. The most useful. But yeah, so I only got my ears six months ago. How was your birthday? It was great. You I went somewhere that. for like. I oh, know. Was your brother's birthday? Yeah. No. Yeah, so for my brother for Chris. Christmas. Yeah. Um, I got oh. him uh, an experience at the Cauldron, which is actually well, we one, of my, yeah, man, one of our yeah, one of our members. Um, it was honestly amazing. Like, uh, it was it was so much fun. The whole thing was great. Like, um, also shout out to Max. He obviously put a word in with the guys there, and then I got like we both got like special treatment. It was just so nice. We got like a free shot and stuff. And yeah, it was it was honestly incredible. If you ever find yourself in London or looking for kind of like a fun experience based thing to do to get someone for their birthday or anything, would definitely recommend. Hashtag. Not sponsored. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a more is a more than you can do. It's a more than you can do. It's a more than you can do. Check out Abby's TikTok. Uh, uh, oh, that's not real. My sister showed me yeah. on TikTok at the uh, weekend, so it's only a matter of you're time. You're missing it. You're missing it. This uh, is it's it's actually part of my topical news. I don't know whether I covered it last week. All, all the know. days are blurring into one at the moment. But is there a um, uh, bite launch? Yeah, we have discussed like, We discussed it. Wait, this is so two now, weeks ago. Oh, I know. I'm but so like, on it. You're so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mm. so on it. I'm actually on it. Yeah, I'm actually on it. I'm just so I'm on, on it in terms of topical news. On it, on you're it. actually yeah, on, on it. it. Are you an influencer on bite now? What have you, what have you played? No, but is, that is my future, is to be an influ- a bite influencer or a biter, well, as, a, a as I'm calling them. But I feel like that's kind of... That's it. That sounds like something else. Semi-illegal. Yeah, this this um, sounds, makes, makes you feel a bit uncomfortable when you say it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. No, yeah. I so no, I'm uh, probably going to be one of those at some point. So watch my journey. I'll start another wow. vlog, and it'll be wow. uh, my journey to being a biter. A biter. Yeah, not not a biter. Biter. I think they call a bite man. Like the new version of a road man, a bite man. <laughs> I'm a bite man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I was about to do like a TikTok dance, but I'm definitely not doing that. Oh, yeah. Um, my sister tried to teach them to me on the other channel. I don't really do that. I'm just not not quite sure yet. It's ready. To you know what? Because you fit that age. Yeah. She said to me, she was like, "You should get TikTok." And I sat there. I was like, "Emma, I just don't think you have to." Too now. I've crossed that part. Yeah. I like learning the dance routines. I just can't. It's like sad. Whole I'm not ready to. You know, I'm just not. <laughs> not. You are an investor, so. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, that 60 quid of my free trade account is. Um, sweet. <laughs> it's yeah, really, it is rocket. Really headed up. Um, yeah. So what? Yeah. So what else happened? So you, you had yeah, your birthday. Had you're birthday. now. I mean, you're talking about the age thing, and then you joined the national. Trust. I did join the national <laughs> trust as a young person, which honestly brings me so much joy. And so, for anyone in the UK, the national trust is like this big national, unsurprisingly, organisation that gives you access to like stately homes and the most British things you can yeah. imagine. Yeah, it's like the British countryside. You're going to see a windmill called what? Horsey wind pump. 
We're going to do that for my brother's birthday. We're going to go and stay at a guest house near Horsey Wind Pub. But there's nothing there. It's just the windmill. It's just the windmill with the the small cafe. But that's all that. That's all really. No offense to any like Abbey Trust or National Trust goes, but that's all National Trust really is. You go walk around for a bit, and then you have a yeah, see houses you can afford, and yeah, yeah, and then all the houses have really good maps in, which obviously ticks up on my boxes. So. I've been going to National Trust in my family for a long time, so for me, getting an official membership for myself so right past was it. honestly ah. one of the, I'm so excited. I get a membership card, I cannot wait, it's going to be the best thing. For under a certain age. Yeah, under a certain age, which I am only just about in the bracket of. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that was, I had, yeah, I had a really nice weekend actually, and then yeah, the essay trying to get back was a bit of a nightmare, but all in all, it was a nice way to end yeah, the week last week. Storm and Cara, then, Chiara, yeah. Chiara. Yeah. Don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm not no, sure actually. I don't think it's no. um, not the sort of weather to have uh, an exposed ankle. Yeah, you love an exposed really. ankle. I do though, enjoy really. an exposed ankle at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's my personal brand. Yeah. I've got good lower leg, yeah. so I should show it off. Has really. anyone told you that before? Um, my mum. Yeah, okay. Apart from that, she's <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can actually have anyone particularly pointing out the lower leg as like. No, but that must be a thing. I reckon that's a fetish. Great ankle. Good ankle. Good ankle. It's probably a thing. You knew. No. Uh, What else is going on? Well, in the world. In the world. Yeah, startup world. world. In the startup world. I don't know. Like, we were just discussing the topical news things that we talk about stuff all week, and then we get to these meetings, and then we, like, forget what we've spoken about in the past week. And I'm sure there's plenty of interesting stuff that's happened. Well, you know, not to have, like, this is supposed to be just like a genuine conversation, right? Not super entertaining. Mm -hmm. And also not super positive all the time, but Mm -hmm. cross between work and topical news is there. Um, uh, And for ultra transparency, and I'm springing this on you because we haven't spoken about doing it on the podcast, but is that, like, you know, there are some events that we haven't been able to run in Asia because of the coronavirus, right? So it's just like, I think there's definitely learning to be shared in that, where it's just like, you, as a business, you sometimes think there's certain things that, like, if you do it, it's just methodical and it will just happen, whatever. But, like, Hong Kong's had lots of challenges from an event point of view yeah. through the riots and now, of course, through, yeah, the coronavirus and stuff. Yeah, the, uh, they're, like, Hong Kong have got, like, a work-from-home policy on at the moment, so people aren't really allowed to in car- those, you know, gatherings aren't encouraged. And there's similar things happening in Singapore as well. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see what the, you know, the impact of that is going to be as well. Like, I'm not sure if this is the full extent of it or whether it's going to continue to spread. So, um, mm. so yes, that's kind of like a really random, that's real world that's thing that's had like an impact on, on, the on the business for the past like a month. And, and you know, really like weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just that, yeah. like out of the blue, you didn't really plan for that. Yeah, of course. So, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's new challenges to have mm. to, to combat. So, um, what's going so, yeah. on a lighter note? Yeah, you have Still not don't have you up. But it does it does remind me every every time we do this to shout out one up. So Domo owns one up, which is the co working space we're in. Um, if you can see the carpet, try to get in a shot. To the but side. it's like a brown like a, a very yeah. orange rug. Mm. Um, so uh, that's obviously the brown colours here, mm. um, as well as purple, which is clearly a photo. Um, and uh, uh, and and yeah, just yeah. big shout out to them for having us and lending us a little bit of Kit. Slightly less this week because we're using yeah, our own camera. Our own so camera. let us know if there's any challenges. We've still got the lights on, so that works. Yeah. Hopefully, don't get too washed out. Yeah, we'll filter it. Out, we'll just filter it off. Filter on. Wait for that summer time we're going to be at. Also, Ash is being really annoying about getting a mug and he's refusing. He says the brand, no, no, I don't the mug get a mug. has to define has to, his personal brand. It does. Uh, and he's refusing to just bring in a mug. I need so, to um, it's not because I haven't been uh, talking like about it. I've been telling him every day to bring in the mug. Like so. a viral campaign, like hashtag get Ash a mug. Get Ash a mug or nice. Ash is Ash a mug. Ash is a mug, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there, you go, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I think on the topical point of view, like I've been just so busy. Yeah, you had the, what, what, what happened last week? What's, what's, what's going on? on? I don't know. Just lots of admin. I think like lots of admin to do, and it, and definitely time. We were talking, ch- chatting about this earlier, but definitely time to like review what we're doing and figure out the whole like Eisenhower matrix kind of thing. Of, like what's urgent and important, mm-hmm. what's really less important that you might otherwise perceive it to be and what really needs focus and so I think it's like a uh, good time whenever you feel overwhelmed which definitely have been over like last last week it's like going okay what really matters here yeah. and there's some things that are annoying you like legacy you can 
stopped doing. Um, mm. Like this week, I've got going to give a workshop at uh, university, which is which is absolutely fine. I love doing it, but it's like going to be half a day yeah. in the middle and of the day. With travel, it's going to be with like travel. It will be basically like most of the day. I'll be out mm. of the office, and then you're like, oh, okay, well that's a huge amount of time in a period mm-hmm. when you're supposed to be growing and managing customers and onboarding partners yeah. and fundraising. Which yeah, you can't see it's like the whole learning to say no thing, isn't it? I think yeah. that you don't you have a reach the point where you're like perfect at that no, and it's just an ongoing process yeah for sure oh. and like some things that feel like a good idea at the time turn out not to be and those that you can't really predict those things all the time i yeah. think you said yes that it was like probably before christmas yeah it was. like you know you didn't know that you were going to be super busy like it just this is one of those things that happens and mm. like you just have to kind of like yeah deal with it and, then and that's why i think like the power of yesterday's board meeting was is that doing a board meeting or with another company mm. Like helps you sit down and just go, okay, like it's easy to tell other people what, what they should do, but harder to take your own advice. So yeah. sitting down and seeing that happen um, and start to take learnings away, which I've done. I've, I've, I've took notes from the meeting, the, the meeting itself, but there was also a little section at the bottom which I'll share um, mm-hmm. with you. Some of it on here, some of it afterwards, because yeah. the other stuff is really boring. But mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, things that like are learnings to take away. So, yeah. Well, selfishly, it's a good learning experience for us in the sense that we you know we have our member board but you just lose your phone a lot of um Good. so we like we have our member board obviously um but that was like the first kind of example of a board that we've had and so we've been kind of like feeling our way through it and working out how best to get the most out of our members and mm. you know make it the most beneficial environment for us and so you're going along to a kind of complete opposite of that kind of board meeting yeah. and working out okay this works that way this works that way and kind of these are the points they covered and this is the approach they took is is useful for yeah. us in terms of how we create a space that is most beneficial for us and for our community yeah um, um at the same time so so yeah i think actually probably and if anything yesterday even though it was down it was probably actually really Good use of your time. Yeah, it was. I think it's like, you know, you know, it's not often you get the chance to feel like you've got a brand new lease of life over a company that you've been uh, kind of running or trying to run for a couple of years. Mm. But like we were chatting about it earlier, where it's just like, you know, we've said the words go hard, go home a couple of times over the past six to twelve months. But mm. it's like actually, do we feel like we've switched that off really? And after yesterday, seeing like how, because it's still over a year old as a company, but seeing how like almost, and I'm sure they won't mind me using this word, it's not really not the right word, but almost naively aggressive, mm. it's actually turned into, yeah, there's some messes, but it's actually turned into like really aggressive growth. Yeah. It's it, it's messier, but then they fix, and then it's messier, and then they fix. And we've done that, but over time, it's like, well, we prefer less mess, so there's less of fix, so yeah. there's less aggressive growth, and actually, it's like, actually, I guess you want to switch that off uh, yeah. sometimes, and I sure. feel confident enough to do that now, and actually almost, in line with the New Year's resolutions of like, which we spoke about in the first one of these, mm-hmm. it's like the lack of apology for ambition and actually just being like, here, we want to do this, it needs yeah. to grow like this, here's how we're going to do it, mm-hmm. um, uh, here's why we're doing it, and, and not being embarrassed about ambition. So yeah, uh, yeah that number mm-hmm. of like, you know, members should be 10x of what it is right now. Yeah, and, and growing that. Yeah, so we want it to be higher. higher. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting what you say about like messiness and like, um, you know, I think, yes, there is a mindset approach in that some people just like create the mess and deal with it afterwards. Mm. Also, you have to, there's also awareness that some businesses and some people just physically can't put themselves in a position where they can make it that messy because they've not got the full back on if it doesn't work. Mm. And like, I think, yeah, being conscious of both sides of that and like us, our choice to be more controlled in how we've built what we've done has been based out of necessity rather than out of, um, uh, but there's like necessity, not just choice. You yeah. know, like we want to create a sustainable business, but at the same time, we've needed to both be able to live off it as well. Like we, yeah. And, you know, risk taking is a part of being an entrepreneur and just in doing this ourselves, it is a risk. But, like, the, you know, there are small risks and there are big risks. And it's it's hard to kind of get over that mindset, I think, at, at times, even when you're in a kind of a risk taking position like we are generally. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the message thing is, is interesting. And I think. Um, it's getting thing. uncomfortable. It's been getting uncomfortable with that, and also trusting in ourselves um, to be able to deal with any fallout from any decisions yeah, that we make. I think that's the big thing. And trusting big that we can any any decision we do work, do if it doesn't work, we can solve it rather than that potentially like 
being the only one thing, you know, but yeah, uh, so. I think that getting comfortable so with that. So we're thinking about that capacity, right? Like we're talking about the Yenna Plus stuff and just adding too many and that mm. starts to cause problems and it's actually, you know, maybe not the right thing to do and we need to think about this, but mm. it's almost a case of like, well, let's have way more than we can handle mm. and then figure that out later. Because the way we've grown up until this point, it's been, you know, I've drawn it before, but it's like the ladder thing or the step thing where it's like mm. you add more stuff and then you create more efficiencies and you add more stuff and eventually get to a point where you just can't add more stuff because there's yeah. literally not enough hands. Yeah. But you can, if you do it that way, I feel like you get to a point where you actually add more efficiencies more than you ever think you could mm. because you go, okay, well, we've done this and we put ourselves in the lurch a little bit. How do we make this efficient? And then all, all of a sudden, your company's like 10% more efficient because you had to figure it out. It's like yeah. sink or swim kind of angle. Mm -hmm. There's a point at which that does become a bottleneck. Yeah, sure. Annoying. I think that's kind of sort of that we're experiencing in terms of like the sheer amount of stuff we do yeah. with, with the size of team. Um, and that, I can, you know, we both feel that bottleneck. I think just purely there's only, when you've got so many stakeholders involved, yeah. um, there's, there is literally a limit to how much you can do in one day. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, try to prioritize is, easier said than done when you've built a business for like seven years and you've got priorities that are just deeply embedded in what what the business is i think yeah. it's it's hard it does make it harder i think but it's interesting like the, the stuff about hands on deck obviously we had our intern start last yeah, week Liv, shout, uh, out, Liv. shout nice. out to Liv, who at some point we will we'll get attempt to get her on uh the video just touch she's only doing uh well she's not only doing, she's doing two days a week so it's kind of dependent on on timing, don't, don't keep kicking the microphone. You do Sorry, hear the microphone. Yeah, so yeah, if sorry. there's like a weird sound that's happening, it's Ash. Um, yeah, so hopefully we'll get her on here at some point. But she's coming in to help with kind of the marketing and the events management side of things. And we're really looking forward to having her on board. And hopefully she'll be able to uh, create some content with the members from within the community as well, which I'm excited about because there are so many amazing stories to tell from within the community. And we just mm. don't currently have the capacity to tell them. So. Um, she'll be helping create that content and and yeah just generally kind of like being an extra hand on deck um, yeah. uh, for us so we're really excited about that she had like a and also kind of selfishly from us like from our side we obviously are planning on growing the team over the next year and we've not grown a team before so we're kind of using her as a bit of a test bed for how's the best ways to onboard a new person to a team like how's the best way to manage a new person like what's the best like that way to do feedback and to how do you create an environment in which they feel really comfortable and happy coming into work and like these are all things that we're essentially kind of learning with her yeah and the um, important thing to say there is that like we so obviously part of our product is to create content that helps people understand how to do that better and we can watch that and so can they yeah. but the real test of whether that works for them is to do it and so like you've got the the video on vision with uh, Sandra Berko about how to you know grow a team and what to look for in your first employee and all of that's helpful mm -hmm. then you need to implement it and then adapt because it, it'll be great great advice but the nuances in there that'll be suitable for certain people so yeah. it's like okay, okay, when we are supposed to do that how we do that um, and, and what bits are right for us there's a dog barking yeah there's a dog it's not the office dog sadly um, um, so yeah, yeah so um, yeah, that was, I think it's, yeah, like the moral of the story is I think it's good to, if anyone ever gets the opportunity to do this, is to embed, embed themselves like in a light touch way mm -hmm. with something external to the business that they're yeah. working on, be it a charitable opportunity or another company in some kind of advisory capacity. And it's important to say that advisory doesn't have to go top down and be bottom up, like here, I'm fresh and here's what I would want from your big company rather than I run a big company and here's what your startup should do. Both mm -hmm. ways are important, mm -hmm. but it gives you good context on what you're doing in your own company. Because you get to see that and you're like, whoa, we aren't focused on that bit and maybe we, yeah, should, maybe be. we should be. It just yeah, really sets things into perspective. Yeah, and it takes you out of the, the bubble that you yeah. kind of end up being in when you're kind of when you're living the day to day so in depth. Like mm. I think yeah, and it's important to like be able to get that headspace. So it was pretty useful in that sense too. Um so yeah, so we have had Liv join last week, well I said last week, we launched our events in Sunderland last week, uh, which is an exciting shout out to Chris, who is running our events there, um, and the only other kind of thing was, well I say main thing, other thing that we spent a simple amount of time on was the um, blog post that you wrote about uh, pitch decks, yeah. and kind of our deck and that sort of thing, and I thought maybe you might want to touch on mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to, to write that post. So I think, like as everyone knows, it's clearly evident in these videos, we're trying to be as like 
drastically transparent as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I think we need to decide certainly internally um, when these start to go public. And I think we're like we're three in. Yeah. It's not a huge amount in, but I think we're almost well well enough first yeah. in like getting these out there that we can put these public. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to just decide on doing that and maybe it's the next one. Um, and as part of that, you know, we want to get to a certain point where we can start doing that with our metrics and our financials, which we've kind of done by having a semi semi-public uh, investor link available um, and getting used to that and then this blog post was another piece of that where it's like you know you find yourself so uh, the blog title is some what was the blog title it's it was advice on, advice on building a pitch deck by a company that hasn't finished their own mm -hmm. and the whole point of it being that like we sit there telling people how to build their pitch deck all day every day half the time um, uh, for people that are raising money mm -hmm. um, quite often is probably a better way to put it and it's so easy to tell other people what to do, it's so hard to take your own advice. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, sat there with a couple of uh, one of our members recently who, like, built up their pitch deck, it was like 57 pages. Mm -hmm. You know, that's nonsense because people that will read this, you'll put yourself on their shoes, it's going to be too long. Um, so, uh, but then you think back to your own process, and it's like, we've taken six to 12 months to properly build our actual deck that we're going to take yeah. out for investment and that's a huge amount of time we've yeah. been able to because we haven't needed the money to survive and like some companies who are scaling mm -hmm. based on you know backing to eventually monetize and create a yeah. sustainable model but that's also put us in a position where i wouldn't use the word lazy but distractions have come up yeah. where it's like that's more important and so it falls down the priority list mm -hmm. so um, so yeah, it's, it's ironic basically that we advise people on doing things and, and you know, I'll confidently say we advise them on the right things to do 99.9% .9 of the time, but when it comes to your own, you look at it and you overthink it. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And the problem is, is that, you know, part of the whole kind of like investment process is like going out and getting feedback and people love to give feedback, but as soon as you get one bit of feedback from a potential investor, you're kind of, your mind goes, oh, maybe I need to like make that more clear in the deck. So you go back and you edit the deck. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, but if we could count up every single variation of the pitch that we have, there'd be like hundreds of versions. Yeah, the current version is called number three. It's, we that's a lie. It's, like, it's like V3, it's not V3. V, like 30, oh my God, at least. And like, the, yeah. because obviously there's like, there's like complete, redos of the deck and then there's also like the stuff that happens internally within the deck that you change so there's you know there's so many different versions of what it's been um and we kind of just got to the point where it's like we understand yes there is a there's not a one size fits all there's going to be ones that are better for some people than others but i think we've learned and something you touched on in the the deck was that uh, in the uh, blog post was that these are meant to be conversation starters. They're not like the be all and end all. If you can't get every bit of information in your deck, it's not the end of the world. The whole point is, it's meant to get you get you to the point where you can then have that conversation with someone and then go into more depth. And I think that's really important to remember because we get bogged down in being like, oh, but we're not going into enough detail about defensibility or about mm. uh, projected revenues or about you know all those sorts of things. And like you you end up with like a you know like a fifty seven. <laughs> Page tech. Someone you go uh, into it like the phrase thing. yesterday, a provocation deck, and it wasn't a bad pitch deck, but I quite like it because it yeah. provokes conversation. That, so yeah, it's exactly. them excited enough to then have questions to ask, mm. and if the answer to that question uh, is in the deck, then that's you know great. But if all the question, if the answers to the questions uh, are in there, then actually they might go great. That's all the information I needed. Thanks, and and you're like cool. Where like how yeah. can I how do we continue this? Yeah. So you almost want to these questions there, but mm. I'm really chuffed with where it's at right now. The latest email yeah. I sent was earlier today, which was some so somebody who said, "Hey, if you want some advice on pitch deck, let me know." And I was like, "Hey, uh, also I know some people that may be interested in, in you know investing or whatever." And I was like, "Hey, here's our pitch deck. Whilst you know we we are always open to feedback and changes, mm. um, we're actually at a point now where." Uh, we're really confident with what it's what it contains, and you know any questions that remain after them after seeing this, um, we prefer to answer in conversation. Mm -hmm. And so it's just almost just like taking a stand where you're like, cool, we're done. Yeah. Now this is the thing. Yeah. Like we're not we're not raising money to spend to, to hire more staff so we can spend more time building a pitch deck. No. We're raising money to build a company. The pitch yeah. deck is the thing that just gets us there. Yeah, exactly. Um, or one of yeah, it's one of the many things that gets us there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just think getting comfortable with that mm. and like. Like done is better than perfect is that line that people 
we swear around all the time. Yeah. I just honestly think that there is just no perfect, just doesn't exist. Yeah, if you wait until it's perfect, it's there is, it, just right? does, it, does, it might be perfect for us, but then it's not perfect for someone else. Mm. Perfect is subjective. So I just don't think you're ever going to actually achieve that perfection that you're kind of working towards. And, yeah. You know, I think it's in a really good place right now. And so we're kind of definitely getting more comfortable. Every time we redo it, we're like, this is a better version. And that this is the problem. Like, you, you come around and you're like, oh, I feel so much more comfortable with this one. And someone will say something and then you're like, no, you sit again. And you're like, oh, I'm so much more comfortable with this version. But it does. I think I'm actually just, really confident. Yeah. <laughs> you're actually really confident. I'm actually really confident with that version. Um, right. But yeah, it does feel a lot better for sure. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Like, there's, there's definitely movement happening and stuff. And so, mm. part of the reason why, you know, things have been so hectic and we get bogged in the detail of stuff is because that investment rate is such a big part of yeah. uh, our existence at yeah. the moment. Um, and it has to be. It's it annoying because it's like we want to focus on growth, but if you do all of that, then the, the raise suffers and yeah. the raise suffers and you just end up in the same cycle. It's, it is literally the advice I would give another company would be like, don't worry about growth right now, go and raise money and then switch on hyper growth afterwards. Yeah. If you know you've got things that you can switch on for growth, that's cool. What would it be like if you switched that on with a team and more infrastructure and more budget? Yeah. Like if you know you can do it now, maybe do a small bit of it, and then but but focus on raising the money. Because if you do all of it, then not only will you be uh, focused on managing that, you'll be distracted from fundraising. Mm. So you'll end up in this cycle of still only just ever yeah. really doing enough to survive. And you know, companies don't have to raise. We've avoided fundraising for as long as possible, yeah. but it's just the right thing for us to do now. So as soon as you decide that's the right thing to do commit fully yeah. and then nail it and yeah. that's what happens. But then kind of back in line with what we were saying earlier, one of the problems we have is that because we're fairly established and a lot of the people we're mm. speaking to know of us already, they're asking, oh like what's your growth like? Like they're, they're, even though we've been like, you know, raising people ask us about growth metrics and that sort of thing. Yeah. So we can't, you know, if you have a conversation with an investor like now and then you have one three months later and then because you've switched off growth for a period of time yeah, to focus on investment yeah. you haven't grown, they're like, oh well you're not the kind of company right. that we want to yeah. So, but also, yeah, it it's hard. Like, what <laughs> lens you view us through? Because if, exactly. you grow, if you view, view us through, like, if you're on the growth metric of the thing that we originally were, which is the events, then that looks pretty impressive because mm. it's constantly growing all the time, but it doesn't generate revenue. Yeah. If you view us through the metric of yeah. like what we currently are, then you know that is slow on purpose to hope, hope help us focus on the fundraise. If you focus on the metric of what we're going to be, there's almost nothing mm. because we're not what we want to be eventually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a weird one, but I think you can make up with all of that just by being like brutally honest. Hence why all of this blog post and, and the video etc is is really important to us because we can just be really honest about what we're building yeah. and actually I'm finding as we suspected anyway, but what we're finding is it's building a more endearing nature of people that combine more into the journey of what we're building and and be and be more. Um, uh, help help people be more publicly aware of where we're at in our journey relative to where we want to be. Yeah. This talks about building a pitch deck and it talks about you know where we come from, where we're going, and people can start to see you know this blog doesn't pitch our round to somebody. It just no. says hey, here's what we're going to be, and and it starts to make people go oh that's yeah, what it exactly. is. Exactly. Um, stops stops from capitalizing. You know. Well, Ash is one of both of our biggest pet hates. <laughs> so, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, um, so yeah, yeah no, so that's yeah. So that's that was pretty much last week. And then what what's going on this week? This week, um, you, yeah, more fun race stuff. And this is going to be it's going to sound boring, but I think the important thing of this that we were going to talk about uh, in the blog that we didn't really start last year mm. was that um, some of the and the vlog was going to be like. A a vlog vlog where it's like following our day in the life and stuff and, yeah. and that's you know eventually maybe we'll start adding little bits into these videos of that kind of nature but um, uh, the reality of business is sometimes that it's not exciting all the time okay. so to jump on this and be like yeah all of this going on it's amazing it's super exciting like that would be fun to listen to <laughs> yeah, no. the reality is i've just got a load of emails yeah um, i've got a, I've basically got to build relationships with some people on the vc side or the, or the funding side investor side there's individual meetings to have with you know low, medium net worths, high net worths, or low high net worths, if that's the right way to put it. Um, people that know who have some money that might be able to invest small check sizes and have coffee with those people, or yeah. sort of set up meetings. And then on the other side, it's like building relationships with fund levels, um, mm. fund fund level um, like institutions. Yeah. You might be able to put in larger checks and. Some of those are really interesting. There's some like semi-famous, I would say, fun names that 
and, uh, yeah, went around and, and asked us to apply or, or send them over some stuff. So yeah. that would be really cool because that you know that makes us start to realise that or, or, or continue to be uh, not embarrassed about ambition. It's like you know why couldn't we have conversations with these people? Exactly. It's always we. Hey everyone, uh, so looks like we jinxed it. Um, the blog just cut off there, not entirely sure why. Uh, bad workman blames their tools and all that. Um, but yeah, that. you blame me, of course you do. Um, yeah, uh, so thanks for, for watching. Uh, there wasn't much more after that. There was uh, just a little bit of rambling and we were trying to figure out how to end the, uh, the video. And I did a really awkward peace sign, so you didn't miss much. Um, but thanks for tuning in. Um, we will most likely try and go live with this next week if we can avoid any more hiccups um, uh, or public, not necessarily live. And, um, and yeah, so tune in for that. Um, as always, if you've got any more questions or ideas or thoughts, um, please post them in the comment section. And, um, and yeah, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks again.